<laughs> Welcome to the warm up. This is Designated Reports Weekly NFL pregame show. I am Jay, the host, this and every week of the NFL season. You can find me individually on Instagram at JDOT. Dot JPG and follow everything that we're doing here at Designated Report. Please, if you're not already doing it, hit that follow button. Find us on designatedreport.com and also find us on YouTube where you can find every episode of the warm up. Every episode. Me, 16 times, 17 next week. Designated Report, sports, culture. Matters. We're flexing all 2021, so get on the train now. January 1st, we got something big coming. I'm not going to give you a warning because we'll be right up in your face, live and direct, January 1st. Heads up, everybody. It's week 16, round 16, episode 16. We're already lit with the playlist. Music of 16 years ago. What were you doing in 2004? I was singing this song. I was walking around with pants off my butt, with a fitted to match every jersey in the closet. What about you? Hit me in the comments. Let me know how you were feeling, what you were doing in the year 2004. Thank you for everybody checking in. What up to all my designated report and the warm up faithful and all the new people that come through every week we are growing. I appreciate the support and the love as we keep it going week by week. Also, Welcome to day three of four consecutive NFL games. Real Paul Cortez. What's going on, baby? Yesterday, the Bucks went silly on the Lions. The Cardinals lost to the previously 5-9 and nine 49ers. And the Dolphins pulled Magic. Little rabbit out of the hat. Fitzmagic came and did his thing uh, late against the Raiders. And the day before, New Orleans ruined Christmas for the Vikings. 50 plus, 50 plus. Shout out to Johnny Dot Pinnell. He said in, in 2004, he definitely had three or four XL jerseys. Me too. I'm a size large. Everything was at least 2X back in 04. I remember I got this Ron Artest throwback Pacers, right? It was yellow, had the blue stripe. Remember the throwback Pacers? I couldn't find it in anything. Like, at the store I was at, they didn't have anything but 6X. Bought it. Bought it. 6X. All right. <laughs> As you can see, I'm still in the Christmas spirit, kind of. Everybody get what they wanted for Christmas? My family hooked me up with that love and attention. It's all I need. A couple of good gifts as well. Let me know what you got. Russell Wilson got his offensive line Scooters customized with their number. I mean, that's crazy. Little P2 scooters. This was via Dwayne Brown's Instagram account. Saw that. What? Scooters? What? It's a big flex by Russ, but for a guy who's coming off a $65 million signing bonus as part of a $140, $140 million Add a couple zeros to that, Russ. Extension last year? What? Mr. Unlimited got some deep pockets, and it's only right. I love, I love when quarterbacks and running backs take care of their guys. I love it. I want a couple more. Kyler Murray hooked up his line with some, like, dope individual paintings of each of the linemen. Tua got his guys grills. No, not teeth. He got barbecue grills and some premium meats. Shout out to Tua. Derrick Henry, who's got his eyes on a 2,000-yard rushing season, got his guys arcades. Full-size Pac-Man arcades. Derrick Henry, what up? Josh Allen got, him, got his guys personalized sets of golf clubs and free lessons. Appreciate that. And my favorite, the Dallas Cowboys. Their quarterback got the offensive line Segway go-karts. I've never even seen these before. He had the company come in and build them. No, not Andy Dalton. No, not Ben DiNucci. Dakota Rain Prescott. A guy who hasn't been under center since week five. Shout out to Dak, who's looking after his guys, even though he hasn't been available 
for them to look after him for quite some time. Big salute to Dak. Hope you get back on the field soon. And this stuff is not new. In years past, Russ got each of his linemen $12,000 in Amazon stock. That's wild. Carson Wentz got each of his linemen in the past a shotgun. And apparently he's borrowed it to shoot himself in the foot all season. Uh, but I digress. And Adrian Peterson has done snowmobiles when he was in Minnesota. Tom Brady did Audi A Q7s. During that perfect season in New England. What? Audi trucks? Tommy? What? Patrick Mahomes has done Louis Vuitton bags. What up? And Joe Flacco, when he was in Baltimore, did slushy machines. Man, imagine rolling to your locker and you see a $2,000 slushy machine in front of your joint. Man. King Alcide already start Fitzpatrick. Let me... I knew we were going to have to... Let me get comfortable. Star Fitzpatrick. Star Fitzpatrick. And this could be a bigger discussion. I'll put my notes off the rails on this one. Start him. You, I think you know what you have in him, and it's scary. And that's why they haven't started him. Also because you drafted a guy, five overall. You know what you wanted out of him, and you want him to go and do his thing. So you throw him into the fire. After a really fast start by Fitzpatrick. But when Tua hasn't played well. And this team is looking like at the time a playoff team. Looking like it. They are a playoff team now. Looking like a playoff team. You got to say. It's not get rid of Tua. Because he's so bad. It's saying we know the guy that we have. Can help us win this game. And we need to win now. We can make the playoffs now. And that's why they made the changes they made. Now Tua did not look great. Not great yesterday. Deep in the fourth quarter, 94 passing yards. But I mean, Fitzpatrick at any time could implode. We know the cycle of Fitz magic when that magic goes poof. But they had to try something and they did and it worked out. More on that soon. Uh, what I do want, like, I want to talk about Arizona. Remember when Arizona, remember when Arizona beat Buffalo? To get the six and three, hail mary or not, they were legit contenders at that point. Arizona, and I think we kind of took our eye off of them and said, "I know what Kyler's doing. D Hop might be the best in the league. Like Arizona's out here killing it." But we're not going to sit here and act like they haven't gone two and four since then. We're not going to act like they haven't gone two and four since then. Kyler Murray has been an inconsistent passer. In that time, we weren't sure about him. And then we seen him do some things in the highlights. East Coast bias. He's out there. A couple time zones away. He's balling. Move on. Let's talk about somebody else. But mm, last week he throws for 400. But there's consecutive weeks when they had a three-game losing streak where he couldn't throw for 200. So what is it? And he's not running like he was before. During that losing stretch... He failed to run for 35 yards a game when this guy we know can break off a 35-yard rush at any point in time. King Alc, they did trick us. They did trick us. Eight turnovers in six games is not pretty as well. And you can't have your hands on the fifth seed and then lose to the San Francisco 49ers, a team who's lost six out of the last seven. You can't lose to them. And think that you're going to make noise in the playoffs. You might not get into the playoffs. Just trying to win a game. What? You can't lose to that team last night. But that's exactly what they did. At 8-7. and seven, They got that brand new and final 7th seed of the playoffs. Right? But a Bears win today over the 1-13 Jags. Jumps them. The Bears would get that 7th seed. And it looks likely. Looks likely. Bears are going to get it. If they don't lose to the Jags. So Arizona, by the end of today, probably will be out of the playoff picture. You couldn't lose that game last night. You couldn't do it. And they did it. Also, the game before that. Not entertaining for anybody outside of Tampa and me. Out of the Bucks faithful. Brady left the Patriots this past offseason. To go to the Bucks, 
this past season. As it's wrapping up, the Patriots are out of the playoffs for the first time since 2008. The Bucks are in the playoffs for the first time since 2007. Is that all we need to say we know who was mostly responsible for the Patriots dynasty? Is it that simple? Let me know. Tom leaves and the team that was so great is not great anymore. And the team he goes to wasn't great and now great. Mm, great. Debatable. Is it that simple? I see you, King Alci. They be heating up. Yeah. Because they got that relationship. And it took a while. And it's going to take a while because you can't get those targets. Mike Evans. Chris Godwin. Gronk. Cameron Bray in the red zone. Not as great as he once was, but still a good tight end. Receiving option. A.B. A.B. Touchdowns in consecutive weeks. And don't forget the running backs they got. So when we talk about who's responsible for the dynasty, I mean, Tom Brady's never had a team like this before. No, they're not undefeated like a team that he's played on in New England. But I'm talking about real, bona fide ball players on both sides of the ball. I named you some receiving weapons. Ronald Jones, fifth and rushing in the league. Leonard Fournette, top five pick. Great player. And it's really shown as Ronald Jones has been out for the past two weeks. On defense, Sue has been quiet, but he's been elite on that number one rushing defense. Shaq Barrett led the league in sacks last year. This year, not doing that. However, when you look a little deeper, he's second in the league in pressures. It's not always about getting to the quarterback about moving him off his spot and changing, uh, having some impact on the play. And he's second in the league in doing that. JPP is in contention for the Defensive Player of the Year. And he's going to the Pro Bowl. Devin White, Levante David. Best duo in the league. Fight me. At me. Best linebacker doing the league. Devin White, Wallet. Pro Bowl snub. I'll tell you about Devin White later, later on the show. His stats are crazy. His stats are crazy. But the Bucks. But the Bucks. Just saying. See you in January. See you in January, playing meaningful games in January for the first time since 2007. And in the late game, the Raiders have lost five of the last six. And they're cooked. I told you last week, they're cooked. They had no business being in that game. They're, I mean, they're decent. They're all right. It's been over. So last night was a chance to play spoiler to the Dolphins. Minute and a half left. You're in the red zone because of defensive pass interference. The Raiders, this is. Minute and a half left. What do you do? Up by how many points? You run out the clock? You try to run down the clock? Josh Jacobs, Pro Bowl running back, gets the ball twice and slides? Inside the five? Derek Carr takes a knee to, take, to kick a field goal when you could have had the touchdown? Don't come at me with the analytics. John Gruden messed up. And hindsight is 2020, I know. But you got to score that touchdown there. Kick it deep and have Fitzpatrick travel the whole field needing a touchdown and not a field goal. What? I know hindsight's 2020. I know, I know, I know. But man, that didn't look good. Like I said, the pa the defense of the Raiders had two of passing for 94 yards into the fourth. Had him replaced. Had good pressure on him. Sacked him three times. And you don't trust that defense with Fitzpatrick coming in? Who you held to a field goal when he had first come in? Trust your guys, man. It didn't cost you the playoffs. You weren't going to make it anyway. But I mean, golly, that's embarrassing. Right? And let's not act. Let's not act like it was just a total collapse by the Raiders. I mean, let's not sell the Fitz magic short. Yo, Johnny Pinnell said Raiders smell like boo-boo. Ryan Fitzpatrick drops back with about 17 seconds to go. Has his face mask ripped to the side. Wasn't even looking at his guy. Heaved it up. Duke caught it. Plus the penalty. Moving to like the 26-yard line. Game-winning field goal. Over. Crazy. Crazy. That's that magic because that was miraculous. All right. That's the past. That's the past. 
Let's talk about today's picks. Let's talk picks for today. Fair warning, don't trip when my picks here don't match the picks I did on the designated report pick them. I'm just trying to, I'm, man, I'm making some risky picks out there so I catch up some ground. But I'm giving you the real right here. Trust this. Don't trust me on the IG story. I'm just trying to catch up to Rev. Real Paul Cortez is killing us in the DR pick them. Let's see what you got. But he's killing us. Submit your picks, by the way, to the designated report weekly pick them. If you pick more winners than us on the DR team, you will win a prize. More on that in the five-minute warning. But the picks. Ravens versus Giants. I mean, the Giants have scored less than 20 in eight games this season. Less than 20, eight games. The Ravens, though, averaging 40-plus in the last three games. You know who I got there. Let's move forward. Rounded Jets. I want to say you never know after the Jets beat a different playoff contending Rams team last week. And we joked that DR, that Frank Gore better watch his back when he's pumping his gas because he has something to do with that Jets win and cost the Jets fans a chance to draft Trevor Lawrence. You bet, man. But I don't think the Jets get it done. But it will be interesting. Cleveland's rolling. They won five of the last six. However, they don't have any receivers today. Do you hear about this? Similar to what Denver's going through, or what had they had gone through with no quarterbacks on the roster because of COVID and close contact, the top four receivers of the Browns will not be playing today. NFL don't care. They say you're playing today. You ain't the Ravens. You're playing today. So... When you're winning five of your last six as, as, as Cleveland, but five of the last six were one-score games, is that a sign of a team who's tricking us and eking them out, getting kind of lucky? I don't think so. I think it's a sign of a, a, a team that knows how to win, and they got to win today because the Jets got a little they got a little juice. The Jets got a little juice. Little juice. And you can't lose to this team. I think we're going to see a heavy dose of Nick Chubb, who's the leader in the NFL in yards per rush. And the tight ends, too. And I'm a Baker hater. But you can't hate today if his receivers aren't coming through for him, if there's miscommunication. I'll cut him a little slack today. But this is a chance for him to show his true leadership. Can you rally the troops when some of the troops just got here? Practice squad guys. Dudes who have never taken a snap in the NFL. What can you do with those guys? Because you got to make some plays on the outside. you got to make some plays. Fun fact, though, the Jets have scored first in eight straight games. So keep an eye on that for the streak to continue. Keep an eye on that. Let me check on my man, Emmy Award winning Danny Rocco, D.Rock575. Browns might need to hit up Kendall Hinton. He's used to these things. That's true. And he plays receiver now. Clever. Clever girl. Colts at Steelers. Have we ever seen a collapse like this by an undefeated team this late in the season? Have we ever seen a collapse like this? My goodness. Whether or not you thought the Steelers were the worst 11-0 team of all time, you got to be shocked that they lose to Washington. And, no, and undefeated team. Lose to Washington and Cincinnati? What? Man, AFC North is like, let's go. Pittsburgh's another team who can't score 20 points. I still have Big Ben as my comeback player of the year. I'm not coming off that. However, this is the fifth straight game for Ben Roethlisberger with a passer rating of under 90. Say what you need to say. Numbers are talking right there. And in that 11-0 win streak, they were averaging just 17 a game. It's that defense, man. So hopefully that defense can do something against Phil Rivers, who knows how to win in December and January. Over 62% winning percentage in six in January and December, Phillip Rivers. And this is a good matchup that we're not really talking about. We're into these young quarterbacks. But what? Phillip Rivers has thrown for 63,000 yards and 419 touchdowns. Big Ben, 60,000 and 393 passing touchdowns. It's a good matchup for NFL history, if nothing else. But I think it's going to be a good game. Steelers got to wake up, man. They got to wake up, man. Could they lose? Could they start 11-0 and lose four straight? Yes or no? 
They could lose this game. They could lose this game. And the funny thing is, if they lose to the Colts today and the Browns beat the Jets, the division is up for grabs. You started 11 and 0 and the division is up for grabs. That's crazy. King Alcide, I agree. Phillip doesn't get enough respect for getting this, ten, this team 10 wins. He's got like a good running game there. I mean, your boy, I know you had him in fantasy. Rookie's coming through lately. The defense is great. But Phillip's really doing some things because T.Y. Hilton and him were not connected early on. They're making it happen now, though. Tight ends as well. Phillip's making it happen. You know he knows how to get the ball to the tight end. Shout out Antonio Gates. Chiefs and Falcons, I'm not going to hold you on this one. The Chiefs are 22-1 and one in their last 23, and the Falcons are like two weeks from blowing their whole roster up. You know who I got. You know why I'm here. Bears at Jags. The Bears offense has scored about 28 a game with Mitchell Trubisky lately. Seriously. And the Jags are giving up 30 a game. So, again, another easier pick for me. Another easier pick for me. Houston has won three straight against Cincinnati. Make that four after today. I told you Deshaun Watson was looking like the third best quarterback in the league. He's on pace to be the fourth quarterback ever. Fourth quarterback ever. Ever. To, have, to average 300 total yards a game for a full season. Passer rating over 110 full season with less than 10 interceptions. They don't make them like that. Stop putting that slander on my man Deshaun Watson's name. The Panthers are in free fall, losing eight of the last nine, and Washington can hear the footsteps for that NFC East uh, in that race. The Washington defense is going to stop Mike Davis, and they're going to come away with this one. But they need a fast start against this Panthers offense. Denver. Denver. Recent success against the Chargers, but the game's in L.A., Justin Herbert is av like averaging the most passing yards per game for rookies in NFL history. Justin Herbert. Speaking of Carolina, remember Cam Newton, fast start. He threw for 400 yards in his first two games career. Justin Herbert doing work, man. But the Chargers are one of two teams ever to lose games, three games in a single season when they had led by over 17 points. Man, that's funny. I thought that stat would belong to the Falcons. But I digress. Eagles-Cowboys sounds boring, but it's a true elimination game. The winner is still in the race for the East. Loser goes home. The Rams are in Seattle, and the winner takes the NFC West crown. This is a great matchup to check out. Russ is actually 1-3 when he goes against the league's top-ranked passer defense, and that's exactly what the Rams are. So I don't think that Seattle has the same home field advantage they did, fans or not. Fans or not, not the same advantage. So I got the Rams. I got the Rams today. Sunday Night Football, Titans at the Packers. I'm watching every single second of this game. Derrick Henry, nine straight games, 100 yards rushing on the road. But it's all about Aaron Rodgers in primetime. Five primetime games for the Packers this season. Aaron Rodgers, 5-0. 16 passing touchdowns. 16 touchdowns in those five games. Elite. In Lambeau. Elite. Elite. In Lambo, where they're 14 and 2 since 2019. That's a real home field advantage, Seattle. And finally, Monday Night Football, where the Bills travel to play the Patriots in a stadium. They're, they've won two games in their last 18 tries, but they will get it done today. Not the same Bills, not your same Patriots. This is your five minute warning. 2004. Get your pizza situated. Get your wings situated. Get your fantasy lineup situated. Shout out to everybody who's playing for a fantasy championship today. Shout out to everybody trying to get that win today. And again, get your pick get your pick 'em picks in weekly. DR, pick 'em. I'm not doing so well, but maybe you could beat me. I was tied for the lead last week. I went five and two. What do you got? Make sure when you submit those picks in your story, you hashtag designated report, tag designated report so we can see you. If you win, you get a prize. A-Town, stop. Ah! Listen, the next time I see y'all will be 2021. 
So an early Happy New Year to everybody who's checking in. I appreciate everybody being here for me and with me in the year 2020. And only big things are popping. Only big things are coming for us, you and me, and the whole Designated Report family and your family as well. Big things on the horizon. Listen, the peaks and valleys are not determined by the calendar. So you can't look at 2020 and think things are going to get better just because the year will now be 2021. Time is man-made. Also man-made are your decisions. Make a better year for yourself in 2021. Make it happen for you and your family. Make a to-do list and crush it every day. Set goals. Set goals. And take a step toward those goals every single day. Appreciate you. Appreciate NERD, Fly or Die, 2004. Love these dudes. Listen, this is the warm-up. I'll see you next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. here live. Designated Report 2021. See you on the other side. Good luck. God bless. Peace.